Student safety takes center stage on Smith Hill as lawmakers listen to advocates for school bus seat belts. If passed, the law would require new school buses to be equipped with seat belts. Eyewitness News reporter Stephen Schuler joins us now live outside the State House with a story that's new at 11. Well, Mike, six states already require seatbelts on school buses, with Connecticut expected to follow suit soon. And now advocates in Rhode Island are pushing for a similar law here. It was early January in Farmington, Connecticut, when this school bus crash killed 16-year-old Vikas Parikh and injured another dozen high school students. In the wake of that crash, Connecticut lawmakers are moving to require seatbelts on school buses, a legislative effort crossing state lines into Rhode Island. There are thousands of children each year killed and injured. Uh, as passengers on school buses because they are unbelted. Sophia Pendergast's daughter died when a school bus ran her over in 1985. Today she testified before the House Committee on Health, Education and Welfare, sharing graphic video to demonstrate the importance of protecting student passengers. We feel that it's uncivilized. Uh, it should be against the law. Children are required to be in school bus and seat belts in their family vehicles. And, um, you know, it's just, it makes absolutely no sense. Opponents of similar laws cite additional costs, liability, and enforcement as reasons against seatbelts on school buses. Still, Pendergast hopes local lawmakers consider the impact of saving students' lives. I think that it's time to protect all children. You know, what we want is for our children to arrive alive. If approved, the law would only apply to newly purchased school buses in Rhode Island. The committee is now considering the bill and will make its recommendations in the coming months. Live outside the State House with the Providence Mobile Newsroom, I'm Stephen Schuler, Eyewitness News.